This is probably the first time that you've seen this face on YouTube. You know, you've probably seen me on Reels or on TikTok with my Don't Be A Dick series. And if you haven't, I would probably go check it out because you'll learn a lot of info in a very short space of time. But the reason why I'm gonna start posting more on YouTube is to simply give you more of the details. And quite frankly, I think they can massively help your form and just make your training overall better. So if you do want to see more of this face, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. And if you've got any other ideas of what other videos you want me to do and what topics you want me to go over, please make sure you drop them in the comment section. So I'm going to give you roughly around five seconds now to go and do that. Play the crickets. Play the crickets. Let's get on with today's video anyway. How we can increase our squat depth and what may be the reasons why we're not getting as deep as we want and how you can massively increase it by just in things like mobility, form and what common issues tend to be caused by it. Now the first thing I want to say is there's no perfect squat depth. We're all different, we all have different dimensions. Having said that, I do believe that people should try and achieve a depth of where their hips are in line with their knees. That might be difficult at first but it's going to be a great point for you to work towards and really help you improve your squat. So the first thing I'm gonna go over are the common errors that you might be doing when it comes to your squat, which is reducing the depth that you can achieve. And that usually starts with putting your weight massively too far towards your heels and pushing your bum to the back of the roof. Now when it comes to our squat, we wanna focus on allowing our knees to travel forward and simply sinking the bum down. If we focus on pushing our bum back, we're gonna find ourselves getting a butt wink, which is where we get this posterior tilt in our pelvis which usually when you finish your sets of squats means you've got lower back pain. And we struggle to achieve any decent depth at all. And we also load the wrong muscles. So if this is you, make sure you're putting your weight more towards the middle of your feet and you're focusing on really sinking your bum down. That way you should be able to achieve more depth in your squat and you'll load your body evenly. And more importantly, keep your torso nice and upright instead of dropping your chest down, preventing you from feeling any pain in your lower back. Now another error that I commonly see is not getting any external rotation in our hips and our knees to allow our knees to go out as we squat. This creates room for our hips to sink down as opposed to pushing backwards and causing the fault that I've literally just talked about. Now a lot of people can struggle to achieve this due to groin flexibility and hip mobility, but if you just seek the right pattern, often they are gonna improve the more repetitions that you do. So if you're not already focusing on driving your knees out as you squat, then start. Now let's move on to the elephant in the room and why the majority of people don't achieve good depth when it comes to their squat. And that is ankle mobility. Now, if you don't know what ankle mobility is, it's where we look to drive our knee over our toes. And in scientific terms, that's known as dorsiflexion. And the reason why some people have really good ankle mobility and some people have really bad ankle mobility, it tends to be down to how active we are. Through working with many people from different backgrounds and different lifestyles, helping them with their squat, I've realized that people who tend to struggle with mobility in general and their ankle mobility specifically are the people who've gone through periods of being highly inactive. Because what tends to happen when we are inactive, our joints get very stiff and our range of motion tends to reduce. Which means when we start getting back into training and we go to squat, hitting a decent depth is gonna be difficult. Because in order to sink our bum down and allow our knees to go forward, we need it. Otherwise, in seeking more depth, our chest is probably gonna drop, we're probably gonna get a butt wink, and then we're gonna start feeling a lot of it in our lower back. So let's first talk about how we can improve it. Now, one of the simplest and quickest ways you can improve it is giving yourself artificial anchor mobility, which comes in the form of elevating your heels. The most popular way to do this is with plates, or even getting a set of lifting shoes that will usually have a raised heel to help you out a bit. Now, to a lot of people, this is really seen as just putting a plaster over the problem, as you're not really addressing the issue. However, a training aid is a training aid, and if it helps you get better results in the gym and makes your training more enjoyable, I'm all for it. And as Olympic lifters use weightlifting shoes with a raised heel to help them out, I don't see why you can't too. Now, when it comes to actually improving our own ankle mobility, we simply need to focus on one thing, and that's focusing on driving our knee over our toe. But doing this in an isolated way and making sure we're controlling our knee through that range. So what I would recommend is whacking your knee on a box or a bench and simply just focusing on driving your knee over your toe, but making sure you're keeping your heel on the bench or the box the whole time. As if your heel just comes off, you're not really increasing the range at all. Now, when you do this movement, it's very popular to feel a bit of a pinch at the front of your ankle, as well as a nice stretch 
at the back towards your Achilles. But don't worry, it's completely normal. And when you're performing each rep, please focus on holding that position at the top, usually around three to five seconds. It's nice to get that stretch, but you also wanna make sure that you're then pulling your knee back and then performing it through that whole range again. Usually around two sets of eight each side is gonna be perfect. So make sure you're doing it regularly and consistently, and within a couple of weeks, you're gonna to start to see the benefit. Now, by improving your ankle mobility, you're very much gonna find that your knees are gonna be able to travel far more over your toes, which means that you can sink your bum down a lot lower. As once our bum tends to get near our knees, that extra mobility all comes through our ankles. And if it doesn't, then we tend to run into the same problems that I stated at the start, which is exactly why ankle mobility really is the key to getting more depth in your squat. So to summarize, if you really wanna get more depth in your squat, then get more ankle mobility. It really is the key that's gonna make a humongous difference to the quality of your squat. But at the same time, of course, I would also make sure that you are following the correct form principles with it. So I hope you found this video and that information useful. And remember, don't be a dick. <laughs>